get started. So I want to first introduce Liang Bo Wang, whose uh, short name is Bobo. And he is from the leading lab at Washington University in San Luis, which is where I did my PhD as well. Bobo is now a five fifth year PhD student in uh, Dr. Leading's lab. And his research has focused on glioblastoma, which is a uh, grand tumors characterization using proteogenomic as well as a single cell sequencing techniques. And Bobo is also a really great uh, tool developer. So he developed a lot of these bioinformatics tools to assist the analysis that he's working on. So Bobo, please uh, take it away. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Kwan, for your great introduction. Um, so let me turn off my webcam first before presentation because I'm afraid my internet thing was not that good. Um, I'll turn it back on at the end. That's the wrong button. <laughs> uh, all right, you guys can still see the screen, right? Cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, my name is uh, Lian Bu Wang and um, my thesis, I'm a fifth year student. Uh, my thesis is focusing on um, glioblastoma um, characterizations. So um, today um, I'll talk about the, my thesis work as part of the CP Tech. And I want to point out that this work is done by a large CP Tech team. So I'm really grateful to have this chance to present on behalf of the team. And um, due to the time limit, I'll only go over um, just a part of our paper um, to highlight some of the key findings and showcase what you and anyone in the research community can utilize this powerful multi-omic data sets uh, we generate in the CB Tech. Um, sometimes um, it might be a bit jumpy and this is actually also the first time I present this uh, to the general public. So uh, bear with me. All right, so um, glioblastoma, um, uh, also known as GBM, is uh, the most common form of the malignant brain tumors. And also it's very deadly uh, with the median survival uh, about less than a year. And despite its aggressiveness, it, it, the standard of care for GBM is actually pretty limited. Uh, there's the typical surgical um, resections, removal, and then you have chemo or uh, radiotherapies. And some, some patients are qualified for this uh, TMZ drug uh, um, due to the MGNT promoter methylation status. But then um, that's it. So um, we, we don't really have a lot of uh, personalized uh, treatments for GBM um, uh, to this day yet. So heading into our study, um, here are the main two questions we have uh, trying to better understand uh, this disease. So first, um, how can we identify clinical relevant uh, patient certifications? And then second, uh, with the introductions of proteomics um, and phosphoproteomics and, and, and other, um, uh, all this proteomic data, and then uh, integrated with the genomic data, can we identify additional therapeutic options? And specifically, because we have this uh, protein and post-translation modifications um, data, so we want to know if we can identify any actionable aberrant signaling transduction events. And so I think uh, the, the work I present uh, today, uh, it's uh, just published uh, a few weeks ago in Cancer Cell. Uh, the paper is actually open access now, so feel free to check it out. Okay, so uh, first, let's talk about uh, this uh, CB Tech consortium. Um, we're part of this um, um, consortium called Clinical Proteomic Tumor Analysis Consortium. Well, so at a very high level, you can think of it as a next generation of TCGA. So both um, CB Tech and, CB, uh, and TCGA, uh, both projects try to provide comprehensive characterizations of tumors. But what's new to CB Tech is our study design and proteomic assays. So at the study designs, um, all these tumors um, is under this prospective collections um, before treatment. So meaning um, the, the sample collection protocol is pretty strict. Um, we're trying to control the variables that will affect the downstream um, assays, particularly um, the protein and fossil protein characterizations. And then uh, for each cancer type, we have um, uh, roughly speaking two cohorts. The first one is discovery cohorts, and then the second one is confirmatory cohorts. Um, this study designs uh, can help us validate some of our findings in the first cohort um, and apply them uh, and try to validate them in, in the next cohort. So each cohort um, you, uh, has about uh, 100 tumors. Some have paranormal, some, uh, some, some don't. And then um, on, on the data assay level, so uh, we did this uh, multi-omic assays uh, on the same tumor segments. 
uh, so uh, we have the, the very standard typical um, bulk whole exon and whole genome sequencing, um, DNA methylation array, um, bulk RNA sequencing, microRNA sequencing. And um, what's new to CPTAC is this uh, proteomic uh, mass, mass spectrometry based uh, proteomic assays. So that helps us to characterize the protein abundance and also um, post translational modifications abundance. Um, most of the both of the studies, uh, all, all the studies uh, include phosphorylation uh, assays, and some will include uh, a few more assays using the same tumor segments. Um, so so far we have um, uh, on the right, you can see we have so far uh, 13 cancer types uh, planned um, uh, to be characterized uh, as part of this uh, CPTEC, and uh, many of them have been published. So um, you can feel free to check it out uh, on the website to see their studies, and uh, stay tuned if you are interested for. Um, the other cancer types. Uh, they will uh, hopefully they will come out pretty soon. Okay. Um, so uh, specifically for uh, CPTAC uh, GBM cohort, um, this is kind of an overview of our sample collections and experiment design. So um, we took out uh, the the tumors from the patients before any treatment, and then this tumor uh, this tumor uh, usually is chopped down into multiple segments, and then uh, we took out one segment for cryopausalization, uh, so it get down into this powder form, and then we use the same set of powders for all these multiomic assays, you know, including the proteomics, genomics, um, and actually we did some single cell sequencing. So what's new uh, in, in our study, um, um, or like what's unique uh, compared to our CPTEC studies uh, include the acetylone, lipidone, and metabolome from the proteomic site, and also uh, from the, the genomic side, we, we did this uh, single nuclear RNA sequencing um, on the same segment. And then for each of these tumor segments, we also have the adjacent um, histopathology slides. And then um, for, for many um, patients in our cohort, we also have uh, the corresponding uh, MRI and then uh, CT scans. And then um, uh, in terms of our cohort sample size, we have about 99 CPTAC tumors. And then uh, we actually also took 10 unmatched normals from the GTEx projects. Those samples are from uh, the frontal cortex. And then um, this is uh, on the right, you can see like the number of samples we have for each, uh, for each data types. Okay, so um, uh, with the like a very brief introductions to our study design and what we have for our data. So the first thing we, we try to do is to identify this uh, clinical relevant uh, subtypes using multiomics. So on the top, it's showing the, the current clinical classifications of GBM. So it's based on the IDH mutant, uh, mutation status. Um, on the very right side, you have all this IDH mutant tumors and all the, all the tumors, like about 90% of our tumors are IDH well type tumors. And you can see there are some substantial uh, heterogeneities uh, within this IDH mutant tumors. So um, we, we utilize this uh, multiomics, uh, uh, unsupervised multiomics clustering approach uh, based on the NNF. And we took in the data types, in, uh, including uh, copy numbers, uh, RNA gene expression, protein, and phosphor abundance. And then um, we asked the algorithm to identify the, the, the signatures associated with each subtypes and uh, what are the, um, uh, the most differentially expressed uh, features uh, across those subtypes. And they are uh, kind of collected and aligned here uh, in this uh, overview heat map. So uh, we, we, we identify um, three uh, multiomic subtypes within our IDH well type tumors. Um, so um, you can see um, at the overview of the uh, expression difference at RNA, protein, and fossils, you can see there are certain uh, features going up uh, or um, uh, having a decreased expressions um, uh, compared to other subtypes. And then uh, with using this all these uh, signatures, we can do a pathway enrichment um, analysis to identify what are the pathways are uh, being reached or being activated in that subtypes. And they are marked in the corresponding um, colors uh, compared to compared to the um, subtype colors. So um, um, just briefly speaking, we have uh, three, uh, these three subtypes uh, going from the left. Uh, we have this NF2 mesenchymal-like tumors. Um, you can see they have uh, activated uh, response and innate um, uh, immune response and some um, um, ECM uh, pathway going up. Um, 
for the tumors in the middle, we have this uh, NF3 classical like tumors. They have um, reg uh, upregulated uh, pathways uh, uh, in RNA metabolisms and mRNA splicing. And on, on the right um, tumors, um, we have this NF1 perneural like tumors. And um, they, they show a lot of activated uh, pathways in this uh, synaptic um, uh, pathways, or um, they have a lot of like neuron activity related pathways uh, being activated. Okay. And um, uh, comparing to the TCGA subtypes, uh, which is just using uh, RNA seq alone, you can see there are some, um, uh, they are highly correlated, but you can certainly see there are some tumors that have, you know, uh, they show signatures uh, of other subtypes. For example, if you look at the, the tumors here uh, in this uh, NNF perneural like tumors, you can see at the RNA level, they are somewhat similar to uh, the mesenchymal like tumors, but then on the protein level, they are similar to the perneural uh, tumors. So <clears throat> we, we try to kind of um, like quant quantify um, this kind of mixed tumor states um, using this multiple mixed membership score. So um, the lower this uh, score, meaning they are less like the other tumors of the same subtypes. <clears throat> and um, also, uh, just as I showed, um, Earlier, like they, they also show signatures of multiple subtypes. So we like to call those those, those tumors to have uh, to be like a mixed subtype tumors. And we've actually found that uh, if we look at like the survival difference um, between those mixed subtype tumors versus um, the non-mixed subtype tumors, um, those mixed subtype tumors uh, actually shows uh, worse overall survival. Um, we don't have you know um, a very like a molecular um, characterization of like what exactly uh, is driving. The survival difference, but we just like uh, this is based on like our general understanding. Like, if a tumor is more heterogeneous, um, this tumor is slightly more aggressive. But this is something we definitely want to follow up in in future. Okay, um, so now um, I briefly talk about um, the the genetic um, the, the multiomic classifications. Now I kind of um, taking a step back and we want to look at the genetic alterations um, in a GBM. So uh, on the left side, I'm showing the top uh, 12 uh, significant mutated genes uh, in, in GBM. And then uh, you can see uh, two of them uh, are actually uh, EGFR, PGFA. They are all RTK uh, receptor pairs in kinases. Um, so we know that RTKs are heavily mutated in GBM. And they actually have been, there are multiple clinical trials in, in GBM um, trying to target uh, RTKs. But um, unfortunately, uh, most of the clinical trials are failed. So we are really interested to see if we can identify additional therapeutic targets um, uh, related to this RTK pathway. And then on the right panel, um, we kind of expand this uh, RTK um, uh, characterizations to uh, a few more, including FGFR3 and MAT. And you can see um, some of the tumors um, also show um, um, also show like uh, a copy number uh, changes or mutations um, uh, uh, in, in one in one of these RTKs. Um, so um, we, we believe this is uh, pretty interesting. And then uh, just focusing on the, the most mutated RTKs in, in GBN, which is uh, EGFR. And we try to uh, compare um, um, the protein and fossil protein expressions uh, in this EGFR outer tumors versus well type. So uh, clearly we can see all the EGFR alter tumors, they have relatively higher EGFR um, uh, protein expression, as well as uh, other uh, protein targets like uh, PO, PHLDA1 or 3 and SOX9. Um, so they can be, you know, kind of um, additional targets if you want to uh, target these EGFR alter tumors. And also at the fossil levels, um, there are a lot of autophosphorations of EGFR um, going up. And then we, uh, we kind of highlight uh, two targets here of interest, including uh, PDPN11 and POCG gamma. So if we do the same, actually do the same and, uh, for all the RTK tumors, and then we, act, and, and then, um, we apply this uh, um, kinase substrate analysis approach um, to, to look at like, what's the uh, correlated um, uh, kinase substrate uh, interactions at the downstream. And we can actually construct this um, um, uh, this pathway level graph showing like both EGFR and PGFA alter tumors actually uh, phosphorylated PDPN11 uh, at different fossil sites, and then they both activate the downstream um, and RTK pathways. 
And this effect is really interesting because uh, it's only found at the, at the phospho level, not uh, protein or RNA level. So uh, we believe this PDP11, uh, or also known as SHP2, might be a signaling hub of, of RDK alterations. And this might be a very interesting therapeutic topic um, uh, to, uh, to target like, uh, on top of uh, all these RDK inhibitors. OK, and um, during the time, I think, uh, the time limit, I think I'm going to um, skip this, this slide and I can come back to this uh, later. But basically, we just uh, we, we try to use a systematic approach to identify uh, what are the uh, drug signatures that can reverse um, the EGFR alteration signatures. But then um, I would like to use the rest of the time to talk about this uh, immune composition difference in the tumors. So um, if you remember that like, we have this uh, mesenchymal um, tumors um, subtypes in, uh, in GBM, and they are associated with this activated innate response. So um, we, we use this bulk RNA expressions to do this immune composition deconvolution. And then we found that there, um, there are some uh, immune composition change uh, within our tumors. So we define uh, four immune subtypes. And then because some, for some of the tumors, we actually have the single nuclear RNA-seq data. Um, so uh, we basically, we, we, uh, we, we can char characterize the same tumor segment um, using single cell data. And, and what's powerful about this um, approach is uh, now we have, um, we can um, identify a specific um, cell type populations and then we can study their gene expression change. So for example, here we're interested in this uh, tumor associated macrophage and macroglia in, in our tumors. And then uh, you can see uh, only uh, some tumors on the left are uh, showing a higher, um, um, higher uh, abundance um, of, of, of those uh, TAMs um, in, in, in their tumor microenvironments. So we can actually compare uh, those TAMs uh, in, in these tumors of, uh, of a relative immune hot um, environment versus this uh, immune cold environment and see what's the, um, what's the gene expression change in those TAMs. Because uh, for some of these TAMs, we believe they are not um, trying, they are not they're trying to kill the tumors, but they are actually helping, um, help, helping the tumors um, you know, in, in a broad way. So identify those uh, differential gene expressions uh, can help us um, uh, to, to, uh, to investigate what, what's the different you know, activations uh, happening in, in those uh, macrophages, microglia, and is there any way we can uh, somehow target them? Right, and then, um, I think I use up my time, right? So, um, so let me let me just jump straight to the the summary. So, um, sorry, like um, I, I didn't have time to go over the slides I have today, but um, I I think um, I have um, show you like uh, with this multiomic uh, integrations, we found like uh, different immune compositions and different uh, clinical offer, uh, outcome differences that can beneficial for our patient stratifications, and then also. Um, um, we, uh, we, we identified some common signaling hub um, uh, looking at different driver genetic activations, um, you know, including EGFR and PGRFA. They both have a shared uh, a same signaling hub, like PT11. And then we also found uh, some of the dysregulations in, in, in tumor microenvironments, and they, are uh, they could be uh, potential uh, future treatment options. And um, uh, going back to our data, so all our data is actually public uh, for, for the broad um, research community. So um, you can, um, today you can actually download and, and download all the data we, we generated and, and analyze it and maybe integrate it to your own data sets. So, uh, you know, for the imaging sites, we have hazel pathology slides, MRI imaging and CD scans. Um, they are available on this uh, cancer imaging archive. For the genomic data, uh, including single cell uh, sequencing data, they are available on uh, NCI's uh, GDC data proto. For the proteomics, they are, they are the very similar uh, proto called proteomic um, data commons. And then actually um, all the process data uh, we use in the paper for analysis is, is available on CVTech uh, data portal. And also uh, Sam Pan um, and a BI um, in BYU, they develop a Python package uh, called CBTech. You can actually just install the package and, and, and download all the process data we generated. Um, with that, um, I'd like to thank um, all, all the CBTech uh, Disease Working Group members. Um, the, this, 
this work wouldn't be possible uh, without your support. And I'd like to, um, you know, a big shout out to all the admins at NCI and um, um, uh, different uh, institutions, uh, including um, Henry, Maddie, uh, for your uh, tremendous work to coordinate uh, between institutions. Um, thank you very much. And um, I can take questions. Thank you, Bobo, for the very interesting talk. And I'm sure people will have questions. So if you have a question, uh, given that I think we have a manageable audience today, so you can uh, unmute yourself and speak up or type in the chat if you prefer to let us ask for you. Uh, in the meantime, I guess I'll start. Um, Bobo, I guess maybe you can, I, I think the tumor immune microenvironment part is very interesting. And it, I think it seems like in a fraction of the samples, you have single nucleotide sequencing. And obviously, you also have proteomics. So maybe you can talk a little bit about how you integrate these two data types for everyone. Um, yeah, that's a that's a really good question. So um, in terms of you know like a direct um, analytical integrations um, between single cell data and proteomic data, we haven't done it. Um, uh, we hope uh, people can develop uh, tools to facilitate this. So right now, um, what we did is. Um, because all, all these different assays come from the same powder, right? So the same cell population. So um, we kind of analyze it, um, the data um, uh, in its own way, and then we compare the results together. So um, I think this, this volcano plot um, showcase how, uh, how, we, how we integrate like the single cell data and polynomial data in, in this study. So we generate this uh, differential gene expressions uh, of like one cell type using using single nuclear RNA seq data, and then we can check if any of these uh, markers are also upregulated uh, in protein data as well. Um, there's also we, we also try to you know um, use the gene expression profiles obtained from the single cell data, and then we can use this to you know to to try to infer like. Um, or deconvolute the protein expressions, but um, this this work is is not included uh, in in this paper, and I believe this is uh, largely still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I uh, think uh, Michael from the audience has a question that uh, thanks for sharing. You want to ask the relationship of, of the samples between CPTAC and TCGA? Uh -huh. Yeah. The, the, uh, thanks for the question. So. Oh, so at the beginning, um, there are some samples um, in CPTAC that are actually from um, TCGA. So um, it, you can think of the early phase of CCTAC as trying to um, add the protein calculations on top of some TCGA samples. But in, in the newer CPTAC studies, all the samples are, um, um, are collected um, within CPTAC. So they are new samples and um, they, they they have, you know, they, they have no relationship to the existing TCGA cohort. Although we do, we do try to use the same, um, same, ad, you know, same uh, sequencing protocols and uh, similar assay platforms um, to reduce the batch effect. Mm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um, thanks for the very, very interesting work. Um, for, uh, for this uh, expression subtypes, uh, did you uh, obtain these by the RNA-seq data or protein expressions? Uh, yeah, so for this expression subtype, um, it's actually from, it's based on the TCGA uh, gene markers. So they are uh, just RNA-based. And um, we actually use the same same genes defined in the TCGA study. Yeah, I'm wondering about the, uh, their concordance with uh, what you will get from the proteomic uh, subtyping. Uh, yeah. So have you analyzed these? So, um, well, so um, so we we actually. Mm, I think we, we actually didn't try to, you know, to apply the same markers on the protein level. But what we did is um, with, we actually look at the features um, reported by our multiomic uh, classifications. And we compare those features uh, with the expression subtypes, uh, features in, um, 
from the CCGA studies, they actually have um, few overlap between between two sets of features. So I think this is um, quite interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know if I answered the question. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Cool. All right, I guess in the meantime, uh, when people might have one last question, uh, Boba, I want to ask, I think the project also generated metabolome and acetylome, if I remember right, back mm -hmm. in the CPAC presentation. So I guess maybe there's too much result to share, but maybe comment on how you integrate those data um, mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, for the metabolome, um, you know, like there's this uh, two hydroxyl uh, glutarate two HG in this IDH mutant tumors. It's it's actually it's, it's really well characterized. Like we know the IDH um, the the mutant form of IDH protein will lead to this accumulation of two HG, and we can detect this uh, in 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 our metabolome data. And then we can further trace to this uh, metabolic pathway. So the upstream is the TCGA cycle to the, uh, the, the glucose uh, consumptions. And we can see uh, at some of the level, we, can, we, we do see the correlated uh, change, um, you know, meaning uh, we found this um, um, certain metabolites being consumed more um, relative to the IDH um, well type tumors. And we can find some of the associated uh, enzymes uh, that play a part in this either TCA cycle or the, the general um, you know, metabolic pathways. Um, yeah, and then for acetylation, I think, um, you know, it's actually a big topic in our paper. So uh, um, make sure you check it out. And um, I, I think what's interesting is we actually found um, a few histo histone acetylation subtypes um, in tumors. And actually, we, we actually found very similar um, patterns across multiple tumors. And um, um, what I mean by the histone is actually uh, not just the histone three, you know, the oscillation markers that uh, people found. We actually found a lot of like uh, his, uh, H2, um, H1, H4 related oscillation sites showing differential abundance um, across uh, subtypes. So uh, this is uh, I, I, this is this is very really interesting. And we found like this is those uh, oscillation difference are associated with uh, some histone acetyltransferase um, and and other um, HDX as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 